What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 33 and we're going to start this episode off going back into the transfer window and we are hoping to finish the transfer window in today's episode, hoping to bring in a new goalkeeper as well as maybe a few pre-contract signings that you did suggest a couple of episodes ago and I will try and go in for those players but first of all, we're going to have to advance because we haven't actually got any emails yet about any players. We did manage to get a new centre-back in Browning from Everton, which was a good deal. And we still haven't got any, well, we still haven't got any emails, despite the fact I've gone in for so many players. But anyway, let's get the team set up for this match against Chesterfield, and I'll show you the lineup. So this is the side that I've decided to pick for this game, guys, against Chesterfield. Of course, we still don't have a new goalkeeper in the net. But at the moment, we, of course do have Saido Berahino, the, the guy that we did buy in the last episode and hopefully he'll be able to prove his worth in this game here against Chesterfield. We got him playing and he's really the only first team player that's playing at the moment as well as Keiko and also Yun Youngson but apart from that we've got a pretty much fully changed side. We've got Remy Bakar in there, we've got uh, Alex Winter in there who I do want to send out on loan Yun Young soon, we got Gurria, and we've also got Ben Purrington as well as a few other players. But I'm sure we're still going to be able to do uh, fairly well in this match, and I'm hoping we can go ahead and pick up the three points. But like I was saying, we really, really haven't won a game in a while, so it would be good if we could actually try and score some goals and maybe win a game. Oh my god, what a save that is! What a save! He has made up for all of his mistakes. Tommy Lee, this has got to be the save of the season. Look at that for a save. Unbelievable. The Berahino. What can he do? Berahino's got round his man. Have a shot, Berahino. And that is a brilliant debut goal for Saido Berahino. He gets his goal. And he is certainly looking like a better replacement for Danny Ward than any of the other players that I could have got him for. And I picked him up only for two and a half million. Look at this run. All the way past the defender. He tries to go in, but it's just not enough. And he's, he absolutely powers it into the back of the net. Really, really good goal. And I'm so happy that he's got his debut goal in his debut game in a Portsmouth shirt. And that is 1-0. I've worked very hard for this lead. I don't want to give it up here. Come on, make the interception. Oh, my God, he's hit both posts. Oh, my God. Jesus. I thought that was a goal there. I actually thought that was a goal. It hit both posts, but he was offside in the first place. Only just. Only just offside. What, an, what a crazy attempt at goal that was. Sorry, sorry. Are they going to the corner flag? Oh, my God. They're 1-0 down and they're going to the corner flag to hold possession. How does that make any sense? Surely they'd want to get a goal. I don't even care. They can keep hold of the ball for as long as they like. It won't affect me whatsoever. So there we go. We actually managed to win the game 1-0. Very, very strange tactics from, um, I think it's Cheltenham, is it? I think it's Chesterfield. No, it's, it's Chesterfield, actually. Very, very strange tactics from them. They were holding the ball in the corner flag despite being 1-0 down. I don't know where the logic is there. I don't understand what's going on there. Probably a bit of a bug there. Considering they were 1-0 down, they surely would have wanted to get back into the game. But Berahino did manage to get his debut goal. And overall, I thought we played well in that match, despite being completely dominated in possession. A lot of chances in that game. But in the end, we managed to take the 1-0 victory down and that is an important three points for us and a win that has taken us a little while a couple of episodes to get i'm hoping we're going to get a few emails here well we've got more than a few emails actually we've got eight emails in fact and we've had a contract offer accepted for carl darlow here i think i'm going to go ahead and accept this guy over any of the other guys we've got wayne hennessy there he is pretty expensive i mean the cheapest one out of all of them is probably going to be Tom Heaton, but the thing is, Carl Darlo is a lot younger, he's got a lot better potential, and he's on less wages than the other guys, so I think I'm going to go ahead and sign Carl Darlo. It may be a bit of a mistake, but we'll just have to go and wait and see right now. So in the end, I actually decided to go with Tom Heaton. I made a last-minute decision. I probably should have told you about it, but I did make a last-minute decision to go ahead and sign Tom Heaton instead of Carl Darlow because I thought 3 million for a goalkeeper that is a little bit risky I mean he might not be a good overall I know that Tom Heaton was a good overall and I got him for very cheap from Burnley I thought it was worth paying the extra five grand a week for his wages 
as opposed to Carl Darlow's 10,000 a week. So I did decide to go ahead and sign him, and I think it was a better decision, to be honest. I know he's a little bit older than Carl Darlow, but come on, he looks brilliant, doesn't he? I mean, 73 diving. 72 handling, 69 kicking could be a little bit better, but 75 reflexes and 72 positioning. A 72 overall keeper for 1.7 million, considering we sold our 70 rated keeper for 4 million, that is a good signing. And in my opinion, he's going to be a really, really good first choice goalkeeper for us. So now that that's done and dusted and over with, we've managed to sign a better keeper. Maybe I could go ahead and sign a better backup keeper, maybe on a pre-contract deal. But at the moment, we'll have a look at the transfer offers. And all of them are unacceptable, as well as some of the uh, contra offers. Going in for Gary Gardner here, who is the Aston Villa central midfielder. I do want to try and sign him if it's possible. At the moment, I don't have enough on the wages, so I'll have to adjust before giving him a contract. And Harry Kane does want to have a bigger role in the club so that is a little bit annoying i mean i would like to sign harry kane but twenty five thousand a week i do want to try and sign some pre-contract players first but if i'm going to be signing another striker ricario zivkovic that was a highly suggested one in the comments down below and i will try and go in for him right now i don't know if i'm going to be able to sign him i will be honest he's probably going to be very very overpriced and i may have said in the last episode that I didn't want to go in for him. I can't remember if I did or not. We'll offer 3.5 million plus we'll read. And we'll wait and see what Ajax do actually say about that. So in the last episode a lot of pre-contract signings were suggested to me. And I'm going to go through them now. The first one being Maximilian Beister. I'm going to try and sign this guy. The German right midfielder from Hamburg. I really do want to sign this guy. I think he'd be a really really good addition to the right midfield position. And I will go and offer him a contract as soon as I adjust my wage budget. Thomas Munir was another suggestion. I think I've said his name right. The Belgium Club Bruges right back. I want to try and sign him. He's on, once again, 30000 a week. But I want to lower that to 25000 So I've got room to potentially, to potentially sign other players, basically, on pre-contract deals. I will give him crucial first team player. And once again, we'll wait and see what he says about that contract offer. So we do have a match here against Bolton in the FA Cup. And because it's away and it's a bit risky simming this match. Because we're most likely going to lose it if we sim it. Even though I do have my strongest side up. I'm going to go ahead and play it as I want to go through in the FA Cup as far as I can. And I feel that we can get a win here against Bolton. So let's get into things here. And well we're just going to have to hope that we can pick up a win. Got a pretty strong lineup there. We've got Tom Heaton starting his debut in goal. And hopefully he does well in this match against Bolton. We've got Blackie at left back. We've got Roe Magnoli, Yun Young Sun. We've got Browning at right back, which is a little bit of a risk. But we've got Hong Chul at right mid, just in case. Just for a little bit of defensive cover. Then we've got Ibe, Ojo, Big Romana. And then up front, we've got Tartar and more Peso. A really strong lineup and one that I feel that can take us through this match and give us the victory. Frunzo Ojo over the top. Can we get there? Yes, we can. Neil more pay. Pass it to Tartar. Can we get the goal? No, it's a really good save by Adam Bogdan. Come on, make the interception. This isn't good enough. Oh, my God, they've hit the post. Really good clearance, though, from Tyler Browning as well. And they almost get a goal there to make it 1-0. Come on. No, 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 no. They're through here, and they make it 1-0. Jermaine Beckford gets the goal. Oh, my God. That is atrocious defending there. I really, really should have done better in that situation. And they capitalise on a mistake. That is just absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Maybe I'm not going to go through that far in the FA Cup by the looks of things. Because Bolton, they are a championship side. They're one league stronger than us. So I guess they do deserve to take the lead here. Tom Heaton probably should have done a little bit better there. But it is close inside the box. And really the defenders are to blame there. But more importantly, I'm to blame. And we're 1-0 down here. Oh, bigger Amana. Bigger Amana, get the cross in. Oh, we managed to win a corner out of that, I think. Yes, we have. It's a good chance here. Do I give it to Bigger Romana? I'm going to give it to Hong Chul, actually, because he's left-footed. Give it to him on the left side. Can he deliver in a really good ball? Let's go out wide like that and inside. There we go. That's a really good ball, and we equalise. Ro Magnoli gets his first goal in a Portsmouth shirt, and I knew that Hong Chul's crossing would finally come into play. A really, really good ball into the middle, onto the unmarked head of Roe Magnoli. And our Italian centre-back gives us 
a 1-1 equaliser here. What a really good header it is. But even more importantly, it's a really good delivery into the box. And that has levelled up the game here. Well, there we go. It's full time. We end up drawing the game 1-1, which is pretty good, I have to admit. And I don't think that means we go into extra time. I do believe that that means that we go into an FA Cup replay match. So that'll be interesting, taking on Bolton Wanderers again in that replay match. It was Roe Magnoli who was our saviour. Because really, we didn't really have too much in the game as, as chances go. We didn't really have too much in the game. And it was Roe Magnoli. Really, I don't score too many corners. And luckily in this match, I do manage to score the very, very rare corner there. We had a couple of chances. That was a good chance there from Tartar in the match. But really, Bolton probably should have come away with the win. But I'm very, very happy with that. As it means that we're not knocked out. But it gives us a chance to beat Bolton in the FA Cup replay match. So here we go. We've got a lot of emails here. And we've had a pre-contract offer accepted by Gary Gardner. I think this is going to be my first pre-contract signing. I think he'd be a good signing from Aston Villa. And he will be joining us next season. And the first player to be joining us on a pre-contract deal. Gary Gardner from Aston Villa. 20,000 a week. And I'm sure he's going to be a good player for us. So here we go into transfer deadline day, guys. You can see the top deals there. And actually, Danny Ward is one of the top deals of this transfer window. Going to Everton for 12.9 million. And Rossi went to Roma for 13.5 million. Loris went to PSG for 49.5 million. That is ridiculous. Even more ridiculous than the Danny Ward one. But let's simulate through here and see if we can sign any pre-contract players. Got a lot of emails here. We've had a transfer offer accepted for Ryan Woods, which is good news. And that uh, deal includes uh, James Dunn going the other way. So that's absolutely fine. We'll go ahead and offer Ryan Woods a contract. And we'll hope that he does go ahead and accept it. As I know this guy does have a lot of potential. We've also had a pre-contract offer accepted for this centre-back, Milosevic. So I'm going to go ahead and sign him now. He's only on 18 grand a week. And he will become our second signing on a pre-contract deal behind Gary Gardner. He will be our second signing. And he looks like he's going to be a good player for us. If we do get to the championship and when we get to the championship, he should be a really good player for us. And maybe a player that becomes club captain. You never know. He's got a good overall and a good potential. And we'll hope that he is a good overall when he does come to the club in June. And we'll have a look if any of them are pre-contract offers accepted. So we've had a transfer offer accepted for Luke James, which is good news. And also Max Clayton. So we're going to have to make a big decision here on deadline day as to which striker we do go for. Most likely it's going to be Max Clayton, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll give both of them a contract and we'll hope that they go ahead and accept it. It's going to be very difficult, actually, because both of them are very, very similar. Luke James is a little bit more physical, but still, they're both very, very similar, being English and young. So maybe I, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do in this situation. We'll give Luke James a contract and we'll hope that both of them accept it and then we'll make a decision on which one to buy. So we've also had the pre-contract offer accepted for Thomas Munir and I think I'm going to go ahead and accept this guy even though he's on 32,000 a week which is pretty expensive. I'm going to go ahead and sign him nonetheless because we do need a better right back than Gurria so I think he'd be a good player for us next season when we do get promoted into the championship. Well if we do get promoted into the championship he will be a good player for us nonetheless and a good right back with a lot of potential on him as well so we have a transfer offer here for Alex Winter and it's probably going to be a loan offer and yes it is it's a season long loan from Rotherham United I'm going to go ahead and accept it because I do want him to get a little bit more game time and of course we did bring in the Everton centre-back Tyler Browning so I think it'd be better that he goes out on loan to Rotherham United gets a bit of game time and then hopefully comes back a better player when we go into the championship so there you go there's just proof that I have to offer big money if I'm going to be able to sign these kind of players and of course it looks like he's going to be going off to Hamburger so if I'm going to have any chance of signing him it'll probably be when we get to the Premier League which is a little bit of a shame but oh well, we're just going to have to deal with that and move on in the transfer window. See if we can make any more signings. We've already made quite a few uh, signings so far. And we've had a pre-contract offer accepted again. I won't, offer, I won't uh, accept that from Tre Trent Sainsbury just yet. But I will in a minute. We've had a transfer offer accepted for Tyrone Mings as well. Another left back that I potentially want to sign. Because I think he'd be a good player. Even though we already have 
two left backs. He can also play as a right back as well. So I do want him as that kind of cover. So I'm going to give him squad rotation player, five year deal. And we'll hope that he goes ahead and accepts that. We've also had a contract offer accepted for Ryan Woods. And I'm going to go ahead and bring him into the club now. He's going to cost us 400,000 plus James Dunn. But I think that's a good deal. And a better deal for a younger player, a younger central midfielder who has a lot more potential than James Dunn. So let's bring him into the club and have a look at his stats. So here's a little look at Ryan Wood's stats. He's quite a physical midfielder. He's really, really quick, actually. And he's got good vision and good passing as well. He looks like a really, really good player, actually, in the physical department. Although his strength could be a little bit better. Maybe a better suited player to a central attacking midfielder. But he still looks like a really good player. And one that I'm happy with uh, signing. He can play at right back, right mid, and also central midfielder. So that is good to know. And I'm really happy with that signing. So Luke James has accepted his contract now after a few hours. And that is good to see. So, um... Really, it's between Max Clayton or Luke James now. I'm really torn between the two. I mean, if I go with uh, Max Clayton now, he's one overall higher, but he's a little bit more expensive. It's a bit difficult, isn't it, to decide? Um, oh, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, if I go for Luke James, he's cheaper. But if I go for Max Clayton, oh, I don't know. I've already had Max Clayton in the Bristol Rovers career mode series and he was very disappointing so what I'm going to go ahead and do is it's probably a bit of a silly decision but I'm going to go ahead and sign Max Clayton actually I'm going to go ahead and sign him and hopefully he'll be a good player for us I'm sure he will be and if he's not then we of course can go in for Max Clayton uh, uh, sorry, we can go in from uh, Luke James. But we have Tyrone Mings as well. Another player that I'm going to go ahead and sign now as soon as I adjust my wage budget. So having a little look at the two players that we have managed to sign. First of all, we'll have a little look at Max Clayton, who looks like a really good player. Once again, very, very good in the physical department. Apart from his jumping and strength, he looks like a really good player. He's got decent finishing as well as good attacking positioning. And he looks like a very, very good player. Five foot nine. Four star week for three star skills. And we'll also have a little look at Tyrone Mings. He looks like a good left back. I mean, I overpaid for him slightly. But he is an English player. So you're going to have to overpay for these players sometimes. You might be wondering why I got another left back. But I need that cover. And I'm pretty sure this guy can play as a right back. No, he can't. Well, when I went in for him, he could play as a right back. So that's a little bit weird. But another signing that we have made there. Two signings, in fact. And we are just going absolutely ham with the signings in this transfer window. So we've had two pre-contract offers accepted here. One for James Forrest a right midfielder and one for Trent Sainsbury here so I'm going to go ahead and accept the pre-contract offer of James Forrest and I'm also going to go ahead and accept the pre-contract offer of Trent Sainsbury and we have brought a lot of players in on pre-contract deals and that has made the squad very very deep now and hopefully these players will be very good when it comes to looking at their stats at the end of the season. They should be good players. And that really is the end of the transfer window for me anyway. I don't plan on doing any more business. And we've spent a lot of money in this transfer window. That's for sure. And we have spent £7 million on players. But we've made a massive profit. So it's absolutely fine. I'm very, very happy with the uh, sales and also the acquisitions that we have made in this transfer window. And that does end the January transfer window, guys, which is absolutely fantastic. Couldn't be more happy with the signings that we have made and a very productive window indeed. Right, this is going to be the end of the video, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. And if you have, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out my channel, guys, and shows me that you are enjoying this series. But other than that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.